Hey everyone, welcome to another video and uh, in today's video we're going to be discussing how to maintain your knife. Uh, whether that's an outdoors knife you might use, one for bushcraft or even your survival knife or just your general purpose knives. Uh, I've got two examples of very pitted and rusty looking knives here. These are the Hortifers HVK knives. Now these are not my outdoor knives by all means. Um, I do have quite a few of these. These two belong to my wife. Hence why they've got to the state they are, because I would never let them get that way for myself. <laughs> um, but on that note, she keeps these in the barn and she uses them for general purposes around, you know, typical tasks like cutting cordage, gardening. Uh, we have a lot of animals, so she's opened up packages all day and maybe cuts up a few carrots here and there for the bunnies. So as you can see, they're left outside, well not outside, but left out in the barn, shall I say. And as a result, corrosion happens. So we're going to use these two as examples of cleaning them up. And that's what this video is all about. How they should look, I've got a hold of a HVK here. A nice and clean one, that's how they should look. These are knives that we used to dish out to on the courses because they're inexpensive and they're very cheap and really good quality. Um, so with that said, uh, they're the knives that we tend to dish out. They're good use and abuse knives, but still they require some maintenance. Okay, just like any form of carbon steel. You can see this one's got really rusty. Not sure if the camera's gonna pick that up. Okay, and this one, well, in a bit of a sorry state. So in this video, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use one knife as an example, how to clean it up with just, with no power tools, just hand tools like sandpaper and things like that. And the other knife, I'm going to show you what you could do if you want to speed up process, especially for knives like this, you know, that are inexpensive, you're not bothered if you, you know, make a few errors here and how to use power tools in order to clean them up if you need to. Uh, so a couple of factors that you need to be aware of. So I hope you enjoy today's video. And if you do, give me a thumbs up and, and subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you enjoy this type of uh, content, let me know in the comment box. Enjoy, guys. So... Let's have a look at the state of these knives. You can see here they're fairly rusty. So my wife leaves them out in the barn and she uses them for all sorts of little tasks around here in the homestead. As a result, they have collected a bit of rust. This will be the fourth time I've cleaned them. Uh, I think I'm gonna purchase her a stainless steel knife for future. So therefore I don't have to keep doing this, but they're inexpensive knives. So here we go. It's a good opportunity to make this video. Things I'm gonna need is I'm gonna be needing some wire wool. Uh, so here's some just inexpensive wire wool that will help me clean off the bulk of the rust just to begin with before I start sanding. Uh, sandpaper, so I've got here some 240 grit. This is some wet and dry sandpaper. Okay, I'm not going to go too crazy with the grits here, guys. I'm not going to be working up the grits to very fine grits. And I've got 400 here. So the, that's pretty much what I'm going to be using for these particular knives. On the other hand, if you're using it for more high-end knives, you can go up higher. Here's a little block. Uh, this little block is just an off-cut piece of wood that I had from when I made my canoe. And it has a nice flat side to it. Good 90 degrees on those corners. I'm also going to be using 3-in-1 general purpose oil. Okay, just to give it a little bit of grease for the sanding. And I'm just going to be using oil stones to sharpen up the bevels there so just to give her a little edge so it's nice and sharp um, I'm not going to be using my water stones in this case because obviously I use those for my higher end knives so oil stones is all I need in addition you can use this little vise that I've got here's little table vise um, this is optional you could probably make do without this but what I like about this little vise that I bought from um, Lidl it pivots around in different directions and helps you get to a good position for cleaning up the the knife itself so i'm just starting off with a bit of wire wall to take off the you know flaky bits of rust uh, i'm just going to work backwards and forwards here I'm not going too crazy with this okay guys i'm not making a mirror image here so on the actual blade itself once i've done that i'm going to use my little block and i'm just going to wrap around a piece of 240 uh, grit of the wet and dry and before I do that, I'm just gonna add just a tiny bit of oil onto the blade, okay? This is one of those cases, less is more, okay? You don't need to go too much with the oil, otherwise you're just gonna make it a bit more sloppier than anything else. So you still want some of that grit from the sandpaper. 
and I'm just going to work backwards and forwards, be focusing on certain elements of the blade that might be worse than others, and I'll be doing some pull um, strokes with the sandpaper as well, just to keep the lines, you know, the, the scratch lines in the same direction. Now, I personally prefer hand sanding blades if they get to this state. Uh, I feel like you get a much better finish, and you're taking your time, and it's also quite therapeutic, if you ask me. Um, after every so often, I've been sanding away here for quite some time. I've obviously fast forwarded there. I'll just give it a little wipe and just see how the work is looking. Uh, and I'll just check if there's anything else I need to do. If there's any pitted dots on there and it's not actually rust and it's just more like patina, then fine. You know, I sometimes just leave it on there. Uh, I don't go too crazy because it just gives it a natural character to the knife anyways. Like I say, these knives are inexpensive, so you'll hear me keep repeating that throughout this video. And the process I'm showing you is for that purpose. Higher end knives, I'll take a much more delicate st uh, stages, and I'll be working through those grits and being very specific of what I'm doing. But for this, I'm just, you know, keep cleaning the knife, basically. I'm now working on the bevel here, and just making sure I stay with the angle of the bevel. So... The good thing having that this block here that has that flat side to it, it makes it a lot easier to work against that bevel there. Now you see I'm working strokes backwards and forwards. I'm also going a bit side to side as well. Um, I'm not too fussed here uh, about getting it sharp at this point. I'm just cleaning the rust off. That's what I'm doing. When I take it to the stone, I'll you know sort of re-angle that knife and get the the edge it needs, I'll be working that bevel on the sharpening stone, giving it a good old sharpening. Um, once I've done that, I followed the exact same steps as I've just done before, but this time I'm now just working upper grit, so a much finer grit with the sandpaper. In this case, I'm just moving up to 400. For this type of knife, the knife is inexpensive as I said before, I'm not going to work any further than that. Okay. If it was a much more expensive knife or a knife I care for a little bit more than what that mirror polish then i'll be working through those grits become finer and finer and finer until i do so for this knife um it's a working knife it's a knife for the homestead it's not really necessary a knife for the outdoors but the principles are there that's the key thing so you can see you see me here following the exact same steps now uh just working backwards and forwards and you can see that side there is done okay it's been cleaned up that rust has been taken off uh, it took me i probably spent around 15 20 minutes on each side as well do see so here's a comparison to the side that i haven't done okay so a fair improvement on that if you ask me uh, once i've done both sides which i've done now i just give a little bit of oil on the oil stone i don't use my water stones on inexpensive knives like this uh, reason being is my water stones obviously cost a little bit more at, uh, than my oil stones these oil stones you can pick up at you know, hardware stores, B&Q, places like that, home base, and you can probably pick them up for a couple of quid. And um, they're just ideal for a quick hone. It's the same stone I use as using my woodwork and chisels when I'm sharpening my chisels. So for things like the halter furs and some of my cheaper moras, this is all I do. I just work backwards and forwards on the stone, keeping the angle of the bevel true to the stone. And then all I'm doing is working backwards and forwards uh, and until I create a you know, a burr on the other side. And once I've done that, I then flip over and do the same on the other side and I just keep checking the edge. And um, once I'm happy and satisfied with how sharp it is, um, then optionally you can move down, uh, so well, move to a finer grit stone um, if you want to, which I'll do in this knife because I do have a, another stone that's again inexpensive. But as long as it gets the knife sharp, that's all that matters. You don't have to have any fa fancy apparatus here, guys. My water stones is what I would use on my outdoor knives, my bushcraft knives, the ones that are custom made, more expensive, um, even some of my own personally made ones that I've made myself, my Jack Claw knife, my A Wright and Son, my Woodlaws, all those style of knives, I would use my water stones on. So if you do want to see me make a video of how I sharpen them knives and the steps I take there and the, the different care that I take there, uh, please let me know in the comment box and I'd be more than happy to make a sharpening video once one of those starts to get just a little bit on the dull side. You can see here I've um, just moved on to a finer grit stone now. Um, funny enough, this stone came from the 99p store <laughs> and I bought it. And it's one of those that's 
hate liking it because it for some reason meant to put a bit of oil on it it seems to get all my chisels up really nice and sharp and gives it a good finish as well so i really like this um, for the price i paid for it for one pound I'm, I'm really satisfied with the results it's given me so this is all i'll do on my inexpensive knives using hand tools so that's the first one done just a quick clean up now i'm not going too crazy with these knives guys because these are just halter for knives they cost a few quid um nothing to them they're good knives good working knives they obviously high carbon steel as you can see because of the rust that comes on there i've used oil stones um i don't want to use my wet stones on knives like this like i said they're not deluxe knives if this was to happen to one of my more high-end and expensive knives then i'd be spending more time trying to get a nice polish on that blade and um using my water stones it'll probably take me quite some time i'll be really really i suppose careful with things nice like this i don't even need to sharpen up the spine because she's not using it you know as an outdoor knife to scrape anything or to use it as a, with a ferro rod or anything like that so she's not doing it for that she's just using these knives to cut cordage cut bags cut a little bit of food for the animals that's it okay so there's no point in going crazy trying to get a mirror image even if it's got some scratches still on it fine the fact it's clean and the fact it's sharp which it is sharp now okay don't need to strop it or anything i might take a little strop onto it but i don't need to but the fact it's sharp now means it's functional again as a knife and uh i'm going to put like a protective layer on there maybe some oil of some sort or maybe even vaseline sometimes works well for this just to kind of protect the steel there i'm sure i'll have to do it again this is like the fourth time i've had to do this to these knives so hence is why i'm not spending too much time on making mirror images here for this knife i'm going to be using my power tools i'm going to show you that technique now i tend to not use the power tools for my high-end knives because it's a bit very aggressive and the steel does heat up a little bit um but just to show you the speed at which you can get these clean scratch lines on the other hand don't go up and down this way they tend to go up this way but i could you know go over it again with a bit of sandpaper once i've got the bulk of it off so let's go use some power tools and show you how quickly that would be to clean up your inexpensive knives like this okay which would be advisable just to do it on your inexpensive knives don't be doing this on your high-end knives I mean, it's up to you it's your knife but um just to show you how quickly we can clean this up okay so i'm going to move you over now to my workbench so i'll be honest here guys i don't tend to use my power tools to clean up knives um, but for those who are impatient and don't want to put the time and effort into cleaning it up with hand tools could use power tools like this one this is my 1x30 uh, belt sander and you can see here all i'm doing i'm starting on the edge or on the bevel shall i say and i'm free grinding here but i'm actually grinding the knife all i'm doing is giving it a little kiss on the belt on that pattern there and uh, just to clean up the rust off it you can see there already with a few passes that's come to a, a nice clean shine, clean shine on the actual bevel itself um personally i don't tend to do this on my inexpensive knives personally but i'm just going to show it to you guys because obviously some people may have these tools and may prefer this method it does require some level of practice all i'd say is keep dunking it in water as you see me do there uh, so therefore the knife doesn't get too hot and i think that's the biggest risk of using power tools the other downside is your scratch lines will go in another direction now you could make it true again but for these inexpensive knives you don't have to so you can see here that's one side done how quick that was done and i'm now going to work on the other side uh, using the exact same technique I'm not going to move through the grits on the belt there because it's enough just to give it a clean what I, this is optional what you can do is take it to your buff and wheel and if you do just be very careful because the knife can be thrown out your hands um all you do is use the bottom part of the wheel clean up the face of the actual blade itself on both sides and then once you've done that just a quick buff just take the bevel and just work across taking extra care Okay, make sure the blade is facing down and do that on both sides and as you can see here quite good results came out of that but ultimately the key thing is to remember not to let the blade get too hot otherwise you can ruin its temper 
So there you go, nice and nice clean one. That's the one that was on the belt. So you can see the scratch lines have changed there on that one, but it'll do the job and it's functional. So you can see there, the personally, I think the hand sanded version is much better. If you want to clean up your handle and you get a bit of paint or some sort of debris on there, you can just use your wire wall here, guys, and just give it a little rub and that should do the job plenty. So guys, that is it. Thank you for uh, joining me in today's video. So as you see there, we've got some very inexpensive knives. They've been cleaned up. Uh, another thing I like to do, which I haven't shown on this video, is use a bit of petroleum jelly or some Vaseline and just get a little dollop on my finger and just rub it on, which this has got it on there now. A grease of some sort, you could use oil, grease, whatever suits your needs. Just something to protect the steel itself. Um, it's like the fourth time I've cleaned these exact knives for my wife. She <laughs> had these for about two, three years now. So um, I bought a really inexpensive knives because I didn't want to use my knives. Uh, my knives will never get like that. Okay, so if it was one of my high-end knives, so I'll say, for example, my Jack Law knife or my A. Wright and Son or something down those lines or one of my Wood Laws, if I was to be using one of my high-end knives I spent a lot of money on and they got like that, then I promise you guys I'll make a video exactly what I do. Okay, really go to town, bringing it to tip top again. Um, but there's a good chance that video will never happen because I never let my knives get to that state. They're always cared for. Um, with that said, if they're inexpensive like these, don't go mental. A quick whiz on the, you know, one by 30 belt sander was enough. As long as you don't let it get too hot, then fine. Or if you haven't got one of those, just a bit of sandpaper, quick rough, get off the, the old rust and just work up a few grits, sharpen her up, done. Be done with it, okay? Don't have to look pretty, doesn't have to look really shiny. It's an expensive knife, isn't it? It's, it's cheap. Um, good quality, but cheap. You know, they're workhorses. And I do that for my Mora knives as well. Um, up to say my, I don't really go too much with Mora's. I go, I think the most I've ever spent on the Mora's 20 quid. I don't really spend too much. I uh, don't have like, you know, the higher end full tang versions of they've got nowadays or anything like that. I just got the companions, uh, a couple of the 511s, 510s, uh, more or less like that. That's all I need for the cheap knives. And they're really, really good quality. But I don't go mental if they did to get a little bit pitting on it. It's fine. I'll just give it a quick clean up, quick sharpen, be done with it. Okay, back on the belt use again that's it because they are just working tools guys you don't have to go mental i do see videos out there where people are trying to get to mirror image i don't think you need to do that for you know for between a five pound to a 15 pound knife just clean it up sharpen it as long as it's sharp and it's got a comfortable handle that's the key thing so there you go guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did give me a subscribe and a little like for this uh, particular video uh, if you want to see more like this if you want to see me do some knife making i've done that in the past and if you want to see me do some actual knife sharpening where I take you through the steps of what I do to my actual bushcraft knives, I can do that because I use water stones on my bushcraft knives. If you want to see the steps I actually take there, unlike what I've done today, uh, just for a quick, quick hone, basically. Um, but if you want to see what I do for a natural sharpening video, let me know that as well. And I will be you know, more than happy to show you the techniques I've employed over the years. So see you guys in the next video and hope you enjoy today's. Take care. Bye bye.